Tell your mom you're going to bed early and pop open your finest bottle of Kentucky Jelly because Shannon Wiry is back. <laughs> what? The KY doesn't stand for Kentucky? Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Animal Instincts Part 2 from 1994. When we last saw Joanne Cole, she was married to a cop who had performance issues. He couldn't, um, brandish his nightstick without first watching her with another man, or a woman, or a man and a woman at the same time. This taught us two things. One, that Joanne liked being watched, and two, I really don't understand cops. When this movie opens, we learn that Joanne is no longer with her husband or with this other guy named Philip who we've never seen before. Maybe they couldn't secure the rights to the first film and needed some flashback material to tell the story. Don't know. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, here Joanne is renting a house and her neighbor is Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And Steve is a major asshole. He works in home security, and after he sets up the cameras his clients request, he sets up secret cameras so he can spy on them from the comfort of a spanking van. And I can't show you what he sees on these cameras, so here's a picture I took of a purple facade. If your facade is that shade of purple, you should loosen your grip. This van show gets Steve all hot and bothered, and he goes home, and when his wife comes home, they do what married couples do. And no, I can't show that to you. And after they're done making the beast with two backs... You didn't have your diaphragm in? No, I... God I did... damn it, Catherine! <laughs> yeah, like I said, he's an asshole. And, uh, Steve, if you don't want to have actual babies, you can always make some mouth babies. Just saying. Back with Joanne, she gets a job, working as a stylist for a photographer who shoots nudes. Uh, I can't show you any of that, but I can show you this picture I took of a daisy. Sometimes you don't realize how round something is until you see it from the side. When Joanne returns home, she notices her neighbor Steve. Yeah. That's the one. He's watching her and she gives him a show. <laughs> no, that's not the kind of show you can watch on YouTube. Steve, of course, likes this show. I, I mean, who wouldn't really? But since he's a skullduggerous ne'er-do-well, he sneaks into her house later and sets up a camera. The installation is interrupted and he drops a screw. Joanne later finds this screw and this leads her to finding the camera. At first she thinks it's the landlord, uh, but when she confronts him about it, he points her in the right direction. Steve. Steve! <laughs> yeah, that's the one. But, as we all know, Joanne likes being watched, so that night she goes to the pub and picks up a boy toy and brings him back to her place so Steve can watch. And this will become a thing. She will go out and find partners and bring them back so Steve can watch from the comfort of a spanking cave. And no, I can't show you any of these scenes, but I can show you this picture I took of two bees. What cute six-legged creatures. When my wife hugs me from behind, I sometimes wish she had an extra pair of hands. Eventually, Joanne poses for and starts a relationship with that photographer. And this doesn't sit well with Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Steve is becoming more and more unhinged and a danger to Joanne. But that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Shannon Wiry. Wow, she is one of the most beautiful people to appear in movies like this. And in this one, she looks better than ever. Part of what makes her shine here is the lighting. Unlike Body of Influence, which was pretty dark, this film has a number of scenes during the day. One in particular is even outside in the middle of the day. How is it that people look more naked when they're outside? <laughs> I don't know. But even the inside scenes are well lit and bright. No stark shadows here. You can see everything. <laughs> and brother, everything looks wonderful. I can't show you all these wonderful everythings, of course, but I can show you this picture I took of pink apartments. The people who live here know that after a long day, it's nice to enter something pink. Beyond how nice everything looks in this movie, I like the story quite a bit, too. Well, at least I like it better than the first one. Steve! Steve! 
Yeah, him. He's a good villain, and the photographer is a pretty nice guy. So, character-wise, there's more to be interested in here. But I wouldn't say the movie is perfect. Like a villain voyeur and a spank fan, it has some shortcomings. Well, we all know what kind of movie this is, so it's hard to complain too much. And, you know, it does deliver everything that it promises, and it delivers it very well. But still, I wasn't a big fan of Shannon Wyrie's character in this one. In the first one, she was sexually frustrated and trying to save her marriage. She was pretty sympathetic for the most part. But here she's kind of aloof and more than a little bitchy. I guess they were trying to write the character as someone coming off a bad breakup, but still, she lacked the kind of adventurousness that made her character so compelling in the first one. Still, well worth checking out for fans of Shannon Wiry, though. That poolside strip and the shower scene are well worth the price of admission, which for most teenagers is a fresh bottle of Kentucky Jelly. <laughs> <laughs>